everyone. Welcome to Made to Dream. I'm your host, Maya Chanel, and here we share stories from women around the world to inspire, encourage, and educate young girls to dream without limitations. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Ms. Hillary Gatsby, and she is the co-founder of Boss Talks Network and also a visionary like myself. So I know this conversation is going to be bursting, bursting, bursting with some energies. So hi, Hillary. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm awesome. I'm awesome. So I want to give you the floor to introduce yourself to the audience and let them know a a little bit more about you and what you do. Absolutely. So I am... uh I am originally from a really small town from Sun Valley, Idaho. I'm, um, I currently live in LA, but I'm from Sun Valley, Idaho. And, um, you know, there are a lot of, um, a lot of people who would think that that's not the, not the greatest to be in as a small town, but it really is because it Mm -hmm. teaches you to, you know, to really dream big. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. so since I was 15 years old, I learned how to connect with people, how to really make, um, tangible connections, uh, with, with people who could help me get somewhere and to help myself and, and for me to help others get to another place. So I'm a master connector. Mm -hmm. Um, been doing it for a really long time. I was really lucky to have a mother who is also a connector and is also really good at helping other people. And she taught me how to do that at a very young age. And I've been doing that pretty much my entire life. I love it. I love it. In this world, you have to know how to um, connect with others because um, there's like, I don't know if you know John John Maxwell, but he has, he has a yeah. book called Everyone Communicates, Few Connect. So that is a really, really, really great skill to have because, you know, some people, they can be great talkers and they can go around a big room and they can find their way to talk with everyone but they may not connect with anyone in that room. So being able to actually connect is a powerful, powerful gift. So let's go back a little bit on your journey. Um, I don't know how far back you wanna go, but you tell us where you wanna start with how you got started with um, building your mindset, building your business, and just building yourself to be the woman that you are today. Well, you know, like I said, I'm really lucky to have a very strong mother. I am an only child. And, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes she tells me, she's like, you knew exactly who you were when you came out of my womb. Like that's, (laughs) she's like, you've always been that independent go-getter, you know, ambitious Mm -hmm. person. And so I would say that it's really started with my mom um, and and how I was brought up. And it was really all about helping other people Um, at the same time as, you know, eventually it helps yourself, right? And so, um, I, I'm, I'm lucky to have had, um, the experiences that I've had. Look, I didn't come from, I didn't come from a wealthy family. I came from a a very moderate sort of middle-class family, but my, my -hmm. parents, uh, were able to meet people who were at a lot, a higher level than they were and be able to leverage those connections for what they did. And then I was taught how to Mm -hmm. do that. And so living in a small town, I feel like you don't have to, you don't have to think small when you live in a small town, you can think big and you Mm -hmm. just have to learn what it takes to connect people, what it takes to connect yourself to the right people. And no matter Mm -hmm. what you do, no matter where you go, always put your best foot forward. That's Mm -hmm. one thing that I can tell, tell our audience is always put your best foot forward. No matter what, always be well-dressed, always be presentable, always be kind, never burn a bridge, all of those things. So I learned that very early on. Mm -hmm. And luckily I got the opportunity to go to Paris because of one of my mom's connections. And I went to school there and I worked in fashion and I got to do all these incredible things. Um, In Europe, I was there for 11 years. And every single step that I took was because of a connection that I made. And so Mm -hmm. it's all about connecting those dots. It's all about being your own whiteboard and really connecting those dots to the next opportunity. But then at the same time, it's also helping others. So how can Mm -hmm. you help others with what, uh, with the connections that you have? Right. So um, that you've learned. Yeah, exactly. So then um, in 2007, I moved to Los Angeles My ex-husband ended up getting a job uh, in Los Angeles and we moved to Los Angeles and that's where I've been ever since. 
And I mm -hmm. started a company and it was in strategic marketing and events. And that company lasted me 10 years and then I got burned out, but it was all about connecting businesses to more opportunities so that they could grow their bottom line, right? Mm -hmm. So I had that for 10 years. I worked with Toyota and Four Seasons and I, I got to work with fashion brands, nonprofits, biz, you know, financial service firms, all kinds of really amazing mm -hmm. firms and got to do some great work, but I did get burned out because um, it's really hard to scale yourself. <laughs> so, right. no, um, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it, you know, when you're trying to bring on other people and they don't necessarily know how to do what you do, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to scale that. So I got really burned out because right. I was doing everything. Um, not mm -hmm. only working in the business, working outside of the business, working on clients, it was a lot for me. And I decided to shut everything down in mm -hmm. the midst of that. I, as I was building my business, I never had any female mentors ever. Mm -hmm. And I had all male, male mentors. And I was like, there's got to be a way to be able to give the next generation mentorship in a mm -hmm. way of like walking in my shoes. So I created mm -hmm. a brand called Stiletto Gal. And it has absolutely nothing to do with shoes. It's all about confidence and being, being confident in yourself and go, walking into a room and owning it and knowing mm -hmm. that you can get to that next level. And for me, when I was living in Paris, shoes were what made me confident. So French women are very difficult when it comes to shoes. They don't like ugly shoes. So <laughs> and being from Idaho, I didn't have any fashion sense whatsoever. And I learned all about um, fashion living in Paris. And when um, I put that first pair of stilettos on, I felt more confident than I had ever felt in my life. And I wanted women to feel the exact same way. So we started mm -hmm. it as a blog. And, um, it was all about walking a mile in my shoes and learning what I went through as a businesswoman and every, the good, bad, the ugly, cause you can't sugarcoat entrepreneurship, right? It's like, right. it's like a, it's like a roller coaster, right? right. It's a fun Definitely. roller coaster. <laughs> and you yeah. gotta be ready to ride every hill, every dip, and you just gotta be okay with it and not, exactly. <laughs> not be exactly. screaming to get off. <laughs> Exactly. And then so fast forward uh, to 2014, uh, we, we would feature women in business as well, other women in business, and it turned into a speaker series, which now is what is called Boss Talks Network, which is a, a mentorship, mm -hmm. continuing education and community for women entrepreneurs and business leaders. So that's me mm -hmm. in a nutshell. It was like a little long, but there you go. <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Listen, that long history just shows you that you can continue to keep moving. You can be here for one thing and then you can find something else and you can move to the next. So it's not to say that you have to stick with one thing for 40 years, you know, yeah. be fluid, you know, do what you want, do what you love. When you get tired of one thing, think of the next idea and execute it. So I love it. I think it's very important for the audience to hear those things. And I know um, you talked about in your childhood, you know, being able to learn how to connect with individuals and different life lessons that you've learned um, over the time. What would be the biggest thing, the most important thing that you feel like you learned as, you know, that 15 year old girl that has stuck with you today and has continued to help you progress and reach your levels of success? Well, it's really interesting because it, 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 it actually flows into what you just said. Um, no matter how many times you fall, you can always get back up again. Like, mm -hmm. and, and you don't really fall. Failure, look, failure is not, is not a bad thing. It's that right. learning, it's a learning experience to get you to the next level. It's just the pathway to get to you, mm -hmm. to get to you where you want to go to be that right. next woman. Right. So mm -hmm. I feel like any, any time that you fall, you just get right back up and you start over. It's the power of the mm -hmm. pivot. Right. And I think it's, um, in a sense, it's like, you know, we're so used to society telling us that, oh, you have to do one thing or build one business and make it last for an eternity or even lifetimes to come. But sometimes it may not be the case. Sometimes it may be just like getting a gig and that gig lasts you maybe 10 years and then that gig has just come to an end. It's not to say that you failed. It's just that 
that is it's on to the next thing. You got to keep constantly evolving with times. It's even with a company, you're not going to be able to sit here with a company and be the same company you were when you started. You constantly have to evolve. I mean, look at Nike. They've evolved like tremendously since they began their company. So it's just, you have to bring on this mindset and just know that, you know what, it's not failure. Let me continue to grow, get these ideas and generate new ideas and bring new thoughts and just improve every single day. So I love, love, love what you're doing. Yeah. And I mean, even now with COVID and the pandemic and nobody saw this coming, we had no idea that this was going to happen and we still don't know what's going to happen. Like every (laughs) single day is a new experience, right? And Uh so you've got to learn how to, how to weave in life. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you take things with stride and you, and like you said, you just go to the next thing and it doesn't mean that you did a bad thing. It, it, or you failed it's because this is it's time to go it's time to level up it's time to be mm-hmm. in a different place that's it most definitely level up like sierra said level up yeah level up. <laughs> <laughs> love it <laughs> so um if you had to say one thing to women around the world just to make a shift in their mindset i mean we're society tells us to function one way and we're trying to become unconditioned and say, okay, well, this is what is like normal. Like I'm trying to be come not normal. So how do I do that? <laughs> how do you be? Well, here's the thing. I, I have a lot of, I have a lot of mindset work that I still need to do. Um, but I will say that what you've got to do is you, you've got to, imagine who you want, who do you want to be? And then start acting like that person. Like mm-hmm. there, we, we have an amazing trainer inside, inside Boss Talks as a mentor. Her name is Tracy Litt. And she's always talking about who you, who that, ne- that woman is going to be that, that person in the future. And you just start being her. You just start. I imagine myself as Beyonce daily. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Take your inner Beyonce. Exactly. It's like you are a queen and you own it. And yes. this is it. And, and you are, you're, you're wealthy in life and in abundance and all that. You, you speak on stages, you do this, you do that. And that's kind of the woman that you've got to be. That's the, it's mm. not about, it's not about striving to be. It's be her in your mindset. Mm-hmm. No, I love it. I love it. You know, I have a, a few different people that I embody, um, you know, a little Beyonce here one day, a little bit of Michelle Obama here one day, you know, it kind of flows and it rotates around. So she, <laughs> I use it in my mindset. Girl, her speech for, for the, the, for the, for the, uh, the democratic convention, uh-huh. I, I about lost it. I was crying. I was like, no, oh my like, God. honestly, it's like, Sometimes you, okay, so we go through life and, you know, like I say, society and culture teaches us to necessarily sit here and be like, okay, like, I just want to go through life. I want to make a lot of money. I want to like live and have fun. But like, when you see things like that, it's like, wow, I want to impact on a bigger scale. I want to show the world that, you know, I have something powerful to say, and I have something that can move millions, even billions, you know, and it just gives you a whole other outlook on life, gives you more goals to reach, and helps you to di- deep dive and find your purpose and your passion in this world. So I, it's powerful. It is so powerful. <laughs> I agree. 110%. <laughs> so over the years, have you felt like your passion and your purpose has changed or has it been the same, but it's been evolving in a sense where, you know, you just continue to build on it? Um, I would say, I I would say it's, it's evolving. Um, You know, there's, there's always that, that main thing within my life. It's always been about connecting, connecting to Mm -hmm. create success and mm-hmm. um, so it, it, it's, a, it's evolved, you know, it went from one thing where I was connecting businesses to each other. And then now I'm doing that more for women, young women, leaders and, and entrepreneurs. And so I've always wanted to, I would say since, I'd say since 2012, I've wanted to 
be that voice and that connector for women all over the world. And I am, I am like, right now I am living my truth. I am in exact, I'm exactly where I am, where I was put on this earth to do. I am mm -hmm. right here. Awesome. So I know that, you know, especially as women, we overcome many obstacles in our life, especially when, you know, going against the grain and becoming an entrepreneur, because we know everyone faces backlash for that. You know, that'll never work. Or, you know, what are you doing? That's not secure. All of these different things that we hear in our mind. How have you had to be overcome different obstacles in your business, in your career, in your lifetime? same as I always do, I get right back up and start over. And it's, it's really all about being nimble and being able to pivot when you need to. Um, mm -hmm. you know, look, I can't tell you that I've done this well. I, you know, mm -hmm. I've had, I've had, t I've several business partners and it hasn't worked out and mm -hmm. I finally have the right one who is epic, but right. it took a long time to get here. This is a decade in the making. And so, mm -hmm. I, you know, and I always, I still have like, am I good enough? Am I good enough? Like there's still that in my back, the back of my mind, but I have to check myself and be like, yeah, I'm good enough. I can do this. And I think that mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether you're an entrepreneur or you're in a corporate career, you've got to, you've got to give yourself a little grace if it's, mm -hmm. if you go through the hardships, because life is, is, life is not an easy thing. Like life is going mm -hmm. to be it's ups and downs. It's always going right. to have its ups and downs. And so you've just got to be nimble and be able to move through those heaps and, you know, those, those, these, those, uh, those mountains and those valleys. Mm -hmm. And like, how do you overcome that is, is really dropping into, into who you are and closing your eyes and being still and, and letting, and letting stuff happen. And then, and then, w then getting up and be like, all right, I got this. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Let's like move with the time. Just keep moving. Keep going. So what would you say to maybe younger girls who haven't experienced um, quote unquote failure? Because we already know that failure is not really the negative connotation that we put on it. I like to tell people all the time, like, you know, when I was younger and I got my first B, I almost lost my mind. I was like, wait, what is this? Like, are you telling me that I am just going to like fail at everything in life now that I got to be? So what would you say to girls who are experiencing those first and just to let them know that, you know, other things are going to happen in life, you know? So what would you say to them? I think you just got to let it roll off, roll off your back, like the rain, you know, it's like, let it just like, don't worry about it. You know, I, mm. I was very similar to you where I was like, oh my gosh, my, my grades aren't good enough. I'm, <laughs> I suck, you know, but it's like, it, it's like, it's okay. It's, it, it's mm -hmm. okay to have a B. It's okay to even have a C. Look, it's going to happen if you're, you know, you're not going to be great in every single subject that you, right. you, know, that you do. So it's, it's really just not, not allowing it to come in it's not allowing it to come in as that, as that big monster, right? It's, a, mm -hmm. it's allowing it to come in as like, all right, it's a roadblock. I can fix it. I can move on. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. And I think it's just not letting certain things determine who you are or what your future will be. You, you make your future at the end of the day. Someone can sit here and tell you, oh, you're not going to make anything. Or they can tell you that you're going to be the next billionaire. You make one of those happen they can't make that happen for you so it's all up to you is what i have to say <laughs> exactly but i do think that in terms of certain communities we need to help we need to help those things happen we Definitely. need to we need to level up and make sure that there are those same opportunities for everybody Mm -hmm. you know, Most because definitely. not everybody's going to have that confidence to like to mm -hmm. do something on their own and they need, and young women need mentors. Mm -hmm. They do men Most for some definitely. reason they find them. They're like, I, you know, they, they, they're so good at finding them, but women tend to not ask for something. They don't mm -hmm. ask for help. And I think that's one thing that I can tell the young generation is ask mm -hmm. for what you want. Never, never think that you're not good enough. Just ask for what you want because what's the worst thing that could happen? They just say no. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. They say, no, it's not the right, it's not in alignment with you. It's the mm -hmm. next person's going to be in alignment with you. And that next person's going to help you get to where you want to get, whether it's a corporate career or as, as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. And I think, um, I love what you said there where, you know, women, we have to find mentors. We have to speak up. We have to use our voice and find our power. And especially in, you know, different societal dif differences, different religious beliefs, different economic backgrounds, everyone is not, you know, aware of the possibilities that they have in their lifetime. And I think bringing that to people or younger, younger girls will create such a big difference in generations to come and just letting them know that, you know what, you're beautiful, you're powerful, you can achieve anything that you want, it can make such a huge impact. But I think it's also important for women to band together and to, you know, uplift each other because we have, I've, I've experienced it myself where you have women experiencing the same thing, talking to younger women and saying, oh, why would you want to do that? You know, you shouldn't want to do that. And I'm like, I'm like listen, we, we are here together. You're supposed to be, you know, uplifting me. What are, why are you trying to put me down when yeah. we should be uplifting each other? We are fighting for female equality. How can we achieve that if there's a bridge within our own community? Yeah, it's, it's you know, I know it was Kevin Spacey who says this, but you, you know, when you reach the top, you want, you want to send the elevator back down. And that is so right. true. And mm -hmm. I think that, women in it, I'm a Gen Xer, so I, I, I'm a little older. And, and one of the things that we were not necessarily taught that we should help other women. And I think mm -hmm. that what's great about the millennial generation is that that is completely changing. It's not right. completely there yet, but I think that mm -hmm. it's, it's moving in the right direction. And the more women right. like you and I who can provide that, mentorship and that education the educational tools and the connections the mm -hmm. better we will we will be in the next 10 years yes most definitely i think that is so important because i don't know where i mean i wasn't back then when they created this sort of competition between women i don't i'll probably have to look more into the history of it but i don't understand like the competition like listen we're 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 the same like come on <laughs> I don't get it. I mean, I, sometimes it starts with our mothers, to be quite honest with you. I mean, I, remember, <laughs> I mean, my mother taught me some amazing things and she's been a, a great role model. But I would also say mm -hmm. that she she also taught me to be catty, which I tried not to be. But I mean, she would she would like talk about other mothers behind their backs. And it was like, <laughs> really? <laughs> like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I mean. I feel like, you know, competitive spirit is a little bit in our DNA, but I don't think it's like that. You know, you know, we're um, survival instincts. Competitiveness is one of those instincts, but I don't think it's like that now. Like, just like. No, on. I don't know. <laughs> def de definitely not. No, <laughs> luckily we've evolved a little bit. <laughs> yes. So what is one thing you would say to women around the world of all ages to just encourage them to dream without limitations? Oh, oh gosh, what a question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, again, I'm going to reiterate, you just never know who you're going to meet. I mean, you, you know, that's why you always put your best foot forward because you really never know who you're going to meet. You never know if that's going to be your next job opportunity or if that person knows your next job opportunity or, you know, mm -hmm. funding opportunity or business opportunity, you just don't know. And um, that's, that's what I would say is really put your best foot forward. Um, and whenever you go out, whenever you're in a meeting, whenever you're always put your best foot forward. Love it, love it, love it. Well, I want to give you the opportunity to allow the audience to know if they want to contact you for services, to get in touch with you, or just to follow your journey. How can they do that? Oh, thank you. Um, well, you can follow us at Boss Talks Network on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We don't really do much Twitter anymore, but uh, <laughs> Facebook and Instagram. And then I'm actually, my personal one is The Stiletto Gal, S-T-I-L-E-T-T. -T 
O-G-A-L on Instagram. So you can find me there. You are welcome to connect with me um, by DMs. You can slide into my DMs and talk to me. <laughs> and um, I'm happy to I'm happy to give you a, you know, a 15 minute mentoring session if you need anything. And uh, yeah, or bosstalks.com. Love it. Love it. And as always, this information will be linked in the description and the podcast notes as well. And we thank you once again, Hillary, for sharing your story with us. I feel like we connected on so many levels. We've had so many different um, of the same ideas. So I really, really do love having this conversation here today. I want to thank the audience again for tuning in. Once again, this is Made to Dream and I'm your host, Maya Chanel. We'll see you next time.